Uh, welcome to this uh, Ecotoxicomic webinar, which is uh, co-organized by uh, Ecotoxicomic, which is the International Network on Microbial Ecotoxicology and the World Foundation for Scientific Cooperation in uh, Ecotoxicology. So we are very pleased to welcome uh, Valentin Dupois, who is, with, uh, who is a PhD student, which uh, who will uh, defend his uh, thesis uh, within uh, several uh, weeks. <laughs> So uh, he comes from Ifremer uh, in France, uh, in uh, Nantes, and uh, he will uh, present uh, his work uh, regarding the toxicity of uh, mixtures on uh, microbial uh, organisms. So, Valentin, uh, yes. let's go. Uh, thank you, Stéphane. Good morning, everyone. Uh, before to begin, I would like to thank uh, Stéphane and the Ecotoxicomic Network, and also the Robertin Foundation for inviting me to give this talk. So, um, uh, so today we are going to talk about um, pesticide mixtures. So why are we interested in uh, mixtures of pesticides? Uh, because first, France is one of the biggest consumers of pesticides in Europe, and uh, especially viticulture totalizes 15% uh, of the total pesticide usage. So it means uh, a very high uh, phytosanitary pressure for the uh, environments, aquatic environments. Uh, pesticides that are used in viticulture can um, contaminate um, aquatic ecosystems near the vineyard plots by um, several uh, different uh, dissipation processes like uh, soil leaching, runoff, drainage, uh, etc. Once pesticides are in a river, they can reach also estuaries and then the coastal waters where they can potentially uh, have a harmful effects on the organisms, non-target non organisms like uh, microalgae, for example. So um, in this study, uh, this study is part of the Phytocot project, which uh, aims to uh, study the utilization of phytosanitary products in agrosystems, the potential transfers uh, towards ecosystem and effects of changing the, in farming practices. So it's a big, it's a big project with uh, many labs uh, participating. And for this project, we had a study site. Uh, it's the experimental watershed of Marciac. So it, it's located uh, near Bordeaux in the, the region of Le Blayet. As you can see here on the map, this is uh, our study site. It's mostly um, vineyards uh, for the agricultural activities. We established a cooperation with the local wine growers for uh, this project. And we followed two uh, main water courses on site. So the Liven, which is uh, in the south, and uh, the river Les Souches, which is transversal to uh, the watershed and goes through the vineyard plots. There is also two industrial activities on this uh, study site. So uh, wastewater treatment plants and uh, distillery, which uh, can participate to the potential toxicity uh, measured in the rivers. So the first aim of uh, this study was to perform uh, toxicity screening uh, using several uh, chemicals. First, we tested a list of uh, 17 pesticides that are used on the study site, and also a few ones that are um, often found in the, in the rivers in, uh, in France. Then we also test uh, some uh, binary mixtures constituted by, by the, the most toxic chemicals from the toxicity screening. And then we tested also uh, process extracts that were uh, sampled on site. So for this study, we selected two marine microalgae, the aptophyte Tisocrisis lutea and uh, the diatom Skeletonema marinoi. For the toxicity screening, we needed a uh, high uh, screening rate ability to uh, perform the experiment because we had a lot of uh, condition to test. So uh, we optimized the microbioassay in microplates for this experiment. The second aim of this study was to uh, interpret the toxicity of the process extract. For this, we uh, performed chemical analysis on site using uh, passive samplers, POSIS, as you can see here. Um, we also used the data sets from our toxicity screening on single substances, but also uh, the data set from the toxicity of mixed substances. So by using these, uh, these three data sets, we hope that uh, we can interpret the toxicity of uh, the process extract and maybe identify some pesticides that are responsible for the toxicity. <clears throat> so briefly for the list of pesticides that we tested, 
Uh, it was based on a survey from uh, Erste Bordeaux that were conducted on site, and which shows also, uh, based on the devices, uh, the, the, the pesticides that were the most toxic for our two uh, marine microbiology. So we tested several herbicides. You can see that diron and isoprotron are not, are not approved in uh, viticulture, but we tested uh, these biocides because they are often found in the, in the water courses. In, uh, in France. We also tested several uh, insecticides um, because we, despite mycology, we also tested the toxicity of uh, all of these substances towards um, marine bivalves uh, oyster larvae. Um, and finally, we tested also four fungicides that were all approved and used on the study sites. So briefly also for the microbioassay in microplates, we used uh, non-treated 48 well transparent uh, polystyrene microplates. Uh, we tested for each uh, chemical six concentration in triplicates. We had six solvent controls, and the uh, test uh, lasted 96 hours. So it permitted to, add, uh, to have an eye screening rate ability and to test several chemicals simultaneously. Uh, we calculated the inhibition of growth rates uh, by measuring the growth of microalgae by chlorophyll fluorescence uh, and calculating the growth rate using this equation. And we determine EC50 using a log logistic model with the uh, DRC package in R. To validate the, the utilization of this uh, microplate bioassay, we performed also chemical analysis to measure the actual concentration of our pesticides in the microplate well uh, along the duration of the experiment. So uh, for the results of this toxicity screening, we calculated EC50 values with uh, corrected concentration, so it's the real exposure concentration that were measured uh, analytically. So for uh, TLUTA, we identified three uh, chemicals that were relatively toxic with EC50 below 10 microgram per liter. It was diron, isoproteron, and spiroxamine. And there was also three other um, fungicides and one insecticide that were toxic, but at uh, rather high uh, EC50 values. Uh, above uh, 400 microgram per liter. For the diatom, the three same uh, chemical were the most toxic, but the diatom seems to be less sensitive to these three uh, chemicals. Also, uh, another fungicide, kinoxifen, was uh, at an EC50 below uh, 100 microgram per liter, and the two chloroacetanilide, esmetolachlor and metazachlor, uh, had a significant toxicity for this uh, microalgae, which was not the case for the other species. So the, the three uh, most toxic chemicals were diron, isoproteron, and spiroxamine. Uh, for diron and isoproteron, we expected that toxicity because it's a uh, photosystem 2 inhibitor, so they're known to be very toxic for microalgae. It was a surprise, um, however, for spiroxamine, which uh, was not studied before on microalgae. So we hope that this uh, EC50 will uh, help us to understand the, process, the toxicity of process extracts. And now I'm going to present to you the results from the binary mixtures experiment. So about binary mixtures, uh, we choose to study uh, <clears throat> binary mixtures because in the environment we have mixtures of chemicals and the regulation actually is uh, mostly based on single compounds with uh, EQS, for example, that are attributed to uh, single chemicals. However, 5% or more of pesticide mixture can exhibit larger effect than predicted, so it can be harmful for the environment. And also, process extracts are a complex mixture. So we thought that by studying binary mixtures, we can help uh, interpreting the toxicity of our extracts. <clears throat> so to sum up the, the, the theory, the principle of uh, binary mixtures, if you take two chemical A and B with their respective EC50, um, you wonder what's going to happen if you combine half of this EC50 together. So uh, theoretically, uh, following the concentration addition model, you will get 50% inhibition. But you can also get more than 50% inhibition. That's what we call uh, synergism. Or you can get less than 50% inhibition. That's uh, antagonism. Uh, to identify these uh, interactive effects, we use the, the isopolygram uh, approach. Which is also um, which uses a ray design uh, experimental design. So for each binary mixtures, uh, it's uh, you test uh, five fixed mixture ratio. So first you test, of course, the two um, chemical alone. So the first uh, 
mixture ray will be, for example, chemical A alone. And then you, you test uh, different mixtures. For example, here we have 75% of the effect coming from chemical A and 25% of the effect coming from chemical B. Uh, similarly, 50-50, 25-75, and the other chemical alone. So if, when you have your data sets, you calculate EC50 for each of the mixture ray, and you can plot your EC50 on, the, on this uh, isotopogram. Then you can test uh, several different models to uh, identify uh, the interaction of your mixture. So the two reference models that are the most used are concentration addition and independent action. In this case, on this slide, uh, I uh, simulated a mixture that follow a concentration addition model. So it's the straight line you can see here. Because isopole are a um, line that always uh, induce 50% inhibition effects. So along, along this line, you will always have a 50% inhibition effect. And as I showed you before, if you place yourself on the 50-50% mixture, the concentration that induce 50% uh, inhibition effect are half of the EC50 of B and half of the EC50 of A. However, sometimes you can have also interaction between the chemicals. And if you have uh, a, a pattern like, like this one, it means that uh, you have an antagonistic interaction. Because here you can see that you need more than half of the EC50 of both chemicals to induce 50% inhibition. Similarly, here it can be also synergism. And if you look here, you will see that you need less than the EC50 of both chemicals to induce 60% uh, inhibitions. So um, I'm going to present you some of the results of the binary mixtures that uh, we tested. So we selected the seven most toxic pesticides from the binary from the toxicity screening. And we uh, performed eight binary mixtures. Most of the mixtures show the antagonistic interaction or uh, were in the range of concentration additivity. However, we identified one mixture between isoproteron and metasaclor that was uh, synergistic and on the diatom S. marinoi. So, for example, these are some results that you can obtain with uh, these binary mixtures. Uh, here, for example, the mixture between isoproteron and diiron, you can see that the experimental uh, point are very close to uh, the concentration addition isobol, which is uh, logical because these two chemicals have the same mode of action. So it's, uh, it's logical that they act by uh, addition. On the contrary here, uh, between isoproteron and spheroxamine, uh, the two chemicals have not the same mode of action. And you can see that the points are above the, the concentration addition uh, isobol, which means that uh, you have an antagonistic interaction which is more uh, marked here for the diatom. And finally, uh, for the synergistic mixture here between isoprotein and metazaclor, you can see that the, all the points and the curve uh, modeling the effect are below the concentration addition isobol. So to conclude on these two uh, first <coughs> micro, um, micro assays, uh, on the one hand, we performed a, a toxicity screening on 17 chemicals. We corrected the uh, EC50 values by uh, performing a chemical analysis, and we determined three uh, of the most toxic chemicals, diiron, isoproteron, and spiroxamine. On the other hand, we also used this markable assay to perform the binary mixtures experiments with uh, mixture modeling approaches, and we identified one synergistic mixture between isoproteron and metasaclor. Now, what's, um, what about the toxicity of process extract? <coughs> Um, to, I will get back on the study site uh, to begin with tax process extracts. So remember, you have the two, uh, two rivers, the Liven in the south and the River Les Souches here. Uh, and we had a contamination gradient between upstream and downstream. And also uh, two um, industrial activity with their drainage ditch here that can also contaminate the Liven at the end of the watershed. So we worked on the field with other lab, the LPT Epoch from the uh, University of Bordeaux and Erster Bordeaux. And for the toxicity screening, we uh, followed four uh, one-month periods. So the first one was uh, January, February, and uh, theoretically there is no treatment uh, during this uh, this period. So it's our control period. And then uh, March, April, April, May, and May, June were periods with uh, phytosanit phytosanitary treatments. Sorry. Uh, in, May, in March and April, uh, there was a majority of herbicides treatments, while in, uh, in May and June, it was a majority of uh, fungicides treatments. Three stations were followed uh, on the study site. So at the entrance of the, of the watershed here, the, the station L1, which correspond mostly to background pollution. 
Uh, also, at uh, the exit of the river Lesouche, just before it goes into the Leven, is the point uh, SE here, and also uh, the point at the, the exit of the watershed L4, which combined the Vineyard Tax City from the SE, um, SE station and the potential toxicity from the industrial activities. On each side, we deployed uh, 12 buses, and we also had 12 control buses that were not exposed as a negative control for the toxicity test. And uh, in addition to this uh, sampling, uh, the LPT epoch performed the um, contamination screening on site during all the year 2017 at the free station that I mentioned, plus the free one you can see in gray on the on the site. So for process extraction, we uh, extract the 12 buses from each site using a solid phase extraction technique, and uh, we evaporate and concentrate the extracts. So we pulled all the 12 buses extract in one, and the final extract in uh, methanol was uh, diluted in five at five dilution in the algae culture medium, and tested in the microplate uh, bioassay that I presented you to you earlier. We used a similar approach to uh, calculate um, analog values as uh, of EC50. So here we are working with uh, dilutions uh, of the process extracts, not with concentrations. So I call these uh, these values DF50, which are the dilution factor that induce a 50% inhibition of growth rate. And by uh, following the evolution of these values, you can um, see the evolution of the toxicity of process extracts uh, depending on the station and the, the, the different periods. So here you can see uh, on the on the y-axis is the DF50 values. So the higher is the DF50 values, and the higher is the toxicity of the extract. <clears throat> so you can see that for uh, the two first um, periods, the toxicity was almost the same for the free stations and uh, for the two periods. Even though we can see a de decrease in toxicity here, but it's not a big decrease, so we can say that uh, this toxicity corresponds to our background toxicity of the process extract. Uh, however, you can see here in the April-May period that you have an increase in toxicity for all sites, especially for uh, the L1 station, for uh, TLUTA, which is twice as toxic as the, the previous periods, and similarly for uh, L1 and SC station for the diatom. For the last period, uh, you can see that uh, L1 and LC station had a decrease in toxicity. However, there was a big increase in toxicity for L4 station, which is potentially the most contaminated. Uh, so the toxicity was twice as high as the previous period for TLUTA and 1.5 fold uh, more toxic for the diatom. Uh, to finish, one general remark on these results. Uh, if you look at all the L1 uh, toxicity pattern here for the two species, you can see it's almost the same for the for the two species, so it's also interesting to to see that the toxicity for from this extract was the same for the two species, while it varies a little more for the two other stations. So now I'm going to talk about uh, the interpretation of uh, these results, and to begin with, to interpret this uh, this toxicity from the process extract, we performed chemical analysis on our diluted uh, process extracts. So we searched for the eight most toxic pesticides from our toxicity screening in the diluted extract. So we selected diron isoproterone, esmetolachlor, and metazachlor for herbicides, and azoxystrobin, chrysoxymethyl, uh, kinoxifen, and spiroxamine for the fungicides. So we diluted the, the process extract for the toxicity test. I'm only going to, uh, we, we only analyzed one dilution, which is the 1400 dilution, to be able to compare the, the same dilution for the, the different periods and station. So the contaminated algae medium was analyzed by LCM SMS and we quantified the selected pesticide. So we could compare the concentration of the selected pesticides on the 1400 dilution. Uh, using this dilution, we were able to uh, apply the toxic units approach. A toxic units approach is based on the concentration additional model and um, permitted us to predict the, the toxicity of the extract only based on the eight uh, pesticides that were analyzed. So we had the, the concentration of the selected pesticides uh, on the 1,400 diluted extract, but we also had the uh, EC50s of these pesticides from the toxicity screening. So for each pesticide, uh, we could calculate the toxic units by dividing the concentration by the EC50. Um, then for each extract, we can calculate a, a sum of toxic units by summing all toxic units from each pesticide. 
And so if you take the uh, sum of toxic units from the pure extract, so we diluted it by 400, so we had the sum of toxic units for the one 400 dilution. Uh, if we want to calculate the dilution factor that uh, induce one toxic unit, which correspond to 50% uh, inhibition, uh, we can calculate it and it permitted us to add a predicted value of DF50, which we can then compare with the experimental value of DF50. And by, by doing that, uh, we can evaluate the contribution of the eight analyzed pesticides to the toxicity of the extract. So um, here is the same uh, figure as, as before. And here I'm um, displaying the, the percentage of uh, the DF50 values that was explained by the eight analyzed pesticides. For example, you can see that for the L1 station, we were not able to uh, explain the toxicity of the process extracts by the eight uh, pesticides that were analyzed. Uh, if you can, if you look at the results from the chemical analysis here, you can see that um, almost all chemicals are present at a low concentration, below 0 0.1 uh, micron per liter, uh, despite uh, s metallachlor which was present at a rather high concentration. However, this chemical was not toxic for TLUTA and its CC50 for s marinoi was rather high, about uh, 1,000 uh, micron per liter. So yeah. the chemical analysis does not explain the toxicity of these extracts. On the contrary, for the SE station, you can see that, and mostly for TLUTA, we can explain up to 35% of the toxicity of the extracts. And this was uh, mostly due to a um, very high concentration of spiroxamine in this extract for all periods with a concentration that was higher than uh, one microgram per liter. I remember the C50 of spiroxamine for this microalgae was about uh, 3.4 microgram per liter. So here we can say that the presence of spiroxamine partially explained the toxicity for the SC extracts. And finally, for the last period, it was almost the same as for L1. <clears throat> Uh, for the last um, station, sorry. It was almost the same than for L1, uh, apart from the last period. And uh, on the last period, we can see a peak of concentration in, of uh, spiroxamine at uh, 8.5 micron per liter, which also explained the toxicity of the extracts for uh, this station and this period. So to sum up the results and to go further on the interpretation, we can see that the presence of spiroxamine at relatively high concentration in the extracts uh, partially explain the toxicity of the S extracts and on the of the L4 major extract. But what it was mostly true for TLUTA, and it's because uh, spiroxamine is more toxic to these species than for the other species. Um, also, we were not able to explain the toxicity of L1 and L4 extracts. So where does the remaining toxicity come from? Uh, we have other leads. Uh, it can be also other pesticides than the one we analyzed because we only analyzed the eight pesticides. So for this, we can use uh, the screening performed by LPC Epoch that uh, analyzed 125 pesticides on the process extracts. But also the work from Yester Bordeaux on the contamination of, of the biofilm that was uh, sampled on site. It can also be other substances like metals, personal care products, pharmaceuticals, antibiotics, or even unknown substances. And uh, for this, uh, LPC Epoch is also performing an high resolution mass spectrometry screening to identify potentially new uh, toxic substances that can explain the toxicity of the extracts. Um, <clears throat> I have only a, a very few results to present to you concerning this, uh, this interpretation, these perspectives. Uh, for the screening performed by LPC Epoch, I had some results, but this was not a uh, concentration in water. It was only the concentration in the in the process uh, phase. And from what I saw, uh, the pesticides that were found at L1 station do not seem to fit with the observed toxicity. The concentration were rather low, and uh, we have to wait the, for the concentration in water uh, to uh, go further in the interpretation uh, on this part of the study. Uh, about the the pesticides uh, concentration in the biofilm. <clears throat> we can see here from the data set from uh, Betty Chomet, which is a PhD student at ESTA Bordeaux, that uh, at the L1 station in May June, we have the majority of, uh, we have uh, more herbicides at the L1 station, which is supposed to be the, the less contaminated here. So mostly it was norfluorazine and simazine, which are both uh, herbicides that were banned in uh, 2009 and also isoproturin. So 
maybe this uh, this can indicate that there are other agricultural activities upstream the the watershed and uh, maybe this this uh, presence of herbicides can uh, explain the toxicity of l1 extract which we were not able to uh, explain yet so uh, to conclude on this uh, this study for the process extract we obtained the baseline toxicity for the two first periods and then we observed the toxicity increase in april may and uh, the toxicity keeps increasing for the the l4 station in um, in may june so did we identify some of the toxic substances? Yes, by performing chemical analysis, we saw that uh, two chemicals were present at rather high concentration. And spiroxamine, uh, the presence of spiroxamine in the extract partially explained the toxicity, mostly for TLUTA. Uh, but we weren't able to link um, our um, results from the binary mixtures experiment with the toxicity of process extract yet. And also we still have to refine the interpretation by uh, continuing to work with the collaborators of the Fitokot project. But on the perspective, I think uh, mostly a, a focus should be put on the spiroxamine. It, uh, this, this fungicide has high toxicity for my mycology and uh, was found at very high concentration in the process extracts. Also, no study reporting on its toxicity or its presence in the environment. So I think there is a need to, to focus on this fungicide because it seems to be rather harmful for the environment. Uh, the same can be said for the mixture of isoproturin and uh, metazaclor, which uh, induced uh, a synergistic interaction. And uh, mostly because the two uh, chemical families of, of these chemicals, phenylureas and uh, chloroacetanilides, are among the most frequently found pesticides families in chemical analysis. So this mixture could potentially be harmful for the environment. And I think we need to focus on the mixture from these two chemical families also. Uh, to finish on process extracts, we saw that combining toxic screening with uh, chemical analysis permitted to identify one toxic substance that were responsible for a part of the toxicity of this extract, so it was pyroxamine. But uh, most of the toxicity remains unexplained, so we have to keep working with the Fitokot project collaborators and combine our different data sets to refine the interpretation. And then I'm really waiting from the results of the uh, high resolution mass spectrometry screening that will potentially permit to uh, identify new toxic substances. Now, before I finish my presentation, I would like to uh, invite you all to my PhD defense that will uh, happen on the 12th December at Tifrem announce if you're interested. And uh, also, I would like to say that I'm looking actually for a postdoc position. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, my coordinates. Uh, don't hesitate to contact me. I'm open to uh, many different opportunities. My main skill is the one you just saw in this presentation, but also one that I didn't show here yet is the the work with uh, plastometry of mycology and uh, combining with crust and dyes to uh, explore the toxic effects on uh, physiological um, functions. Okay, so uh, thank you all for your attention.